Hello Tiger fans and thanks for joining us for a new season of Tiger Athletics here at Campbellsville University. Matt Payton with you as we get ready to kick off the 2017 football season. Joined here on the Perry Thomas Show by the head coach of the Tigers, Perry Thomas. Coach, it's been a while. Good to have you back in the hot seat, so to speak, yeah. and football right here uh, under our noses. It's time to play. I mean, it's been a long time and uh, obviously last year coming off of a tough year. We're ready to get to work and uh, figure out how we can get some wins this year and get back on that championship tilt like we were the two previous years. Before we look ahead, Coach, and, and start to talk about this 2017 season, I want to offer you a moment to reflect. This now your 10th mm -hmm. season at the helm, December of 2017, uh, excuse me, December of 2007, you accepted the role here as the Tigers head coach. You spent a lot of time in this community from your right. days at Campbellsville High School. Uh, you know, what have the last 10 years or so been like for you back here in Campbellsville yeah. and here at the university? Well, it's been a great experience. You know, I, I, I totally enjoyed my years teaching and coaching at high school level. Uh, you know, that was a separate career, but it was great, very fulfilling. I had a great time at Campbellsville High School and then at Paducah, uh, Paducah Tillman High School. And, you know, 22 years of my adult life have been in this community now. And uh, obviously, uh, Campbellsville is a special place. So being back here in this community and, and part of this university has been special. And we've enjoyed every moment of it. It's been a, a tough challenge. You know, we deal with a lot of numbers and we're in a tough league. And um, so it's been a tough challenge, but it's been fun. And we've been able to see a lot of guys come and graduate and move on into successful things in their lives. And, and along the way, we've been able to win some championships and have some uh, good wins. And before we get into the specifics as far as the schedule and the team and maybe some coaching changes, uh, last year you, you talked about you had those two years, back-to-back uh, -back conference right. champions, uh, went to the playoffs. I know that's the kind of the gold standard for you where you want to be year in and year out. Last year you, you guys had some issues and, and a lot of close games, Coach. Yeah. Uh, you could have very easily went eight and two uh, as opposed to the other way around. But talk to me about the mindset over the off season mm -hmm. and, and the team understanding that you know we've got to get back to where we were uh, and and mm -hmm. put the best foot forward going forward right well you know I mean the, the beauty of the the culture of the program is that the guys expect to be successful they expect to win and last year was tough on everyone it was challenging uh, because the guys worked hard and played hard they fought hard and I think the youth just was too much to overcome it's okay to be young but we were young everywhere, and uh, there was just too much to overcome against very good teams. We were in those games, but we would have a point in the third quarter or fourth quarter where you know you would have two, three minutes where it would, things would just explode against us. So that was challenging. So you know, I mean, the work was those guys making it back in the classroom, making it back socially, and making sure they were doing the proper things to get back and then obviously hit the weight room and those things in the off season and get better. And, you know, I think our guys have done a tremendous job. We, we've lost a few guys in there, but we've kept most of the ones that we need to keep in the program and they're hungry to win. And so it's been a great off season. The mindset is great. They're, they're expecting to be back at that level that we were at before last year and, and, and actually exceed that and expecting to, uh, to be a special team. And you get into to spring ball coach and, uh, you know, Hunter Brown is a guy that you expect big, big mm -hmm. things out of. But at spring ball, moving forward, walk me through the, the summer schedule for the guys before we look at here mm -hmm. now 2017. Uh, obviously, spring is well documented and, and different things. And uh, walk me through that, what they're yeah. doing on their own, what you guys are working towards uh, mm -hmm. over the summer before they got back the first week of August. Yeah, I mean, the summer was big for us to continue to recruit, you know, and continue to try to get those numbers and, and the things we need and to fill those holes. And then we had some guys that stayed, so they worked out with us and the others went home and, you know, did summer school and um, some just worked out, but did their preparation to get ready for the season and eligibility wise and on the field. You know, coaches, like I said, continue to recruit, but we also worked our craft. We did a lot of clinic and, and, and we continue to develop our packages that we thought we could run with this group of guys to make sure that we were honed in on what we could do really special. And we did all that up leading up to camp. And then, of course, once camp gets here, it becomes focused on football and getting ready for uh, getting ourselves ready for you, Pike, somewhat. But, you know, early in the year, I, I still believe you have to work on yourselves first. Now the Tigers will get their first opportunity on the field Thursday night, 7 o'clock at Finley Stadium as they take on the Pikeville Bears. We'll step away, come back, and take a look at the schedule here, the 2017 season as the Tigers get set for kickoff Thursday. Stay with us on the Perry Thomas Show.
Citizens Bank and Trust knows just how hectic your day can be. Stay on track during your busiest days with Citizens Bank and Trust. Buying the latest gear to support your favorite team. Or grabbing a coffee after studying all night. Citizens Bank allows you to deposit your checks with the snap of a picture at any time, especially after hours. Citizens Bank and Trust, keeping you on schedule. Now introducing Apple, Android, and Google Pay. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Campbellsville University Cosmetology teaches beauty inside and out. The cosmetology students at CU receive salon experience while learning in a contemporary environment from faculty who have worked in the industry. With areas of study ranging from hairstyling to salon management, Campbellsville University Cosmetology can help you turn your passion into a profession. Kickstart your cosmetology career today. Visit campbellsville.edu slash cosmetology. Here at Saloma Baptist Church, our mission and ministry extend beyond our walls. We are focused on teaching all ages about the love of Jesus and preparing them for a life of mission. We are committed to serving the local community and the world in the name of Jesus Christ. For more information on service times and mission opportunities, visit our website at salomabaptist.com. We extend a warm welcome to you and your family here at Saloma Baptist Church. Welcome back to the Perry Thomas Show here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Thanks for listening on 88.7 The Tiger, watching on Comcast Cable Channel 10 as the Tigers and head coach Perry Thomas get set to kick off the 2017 season. We'll talk about the 2017 roster. Coach, we'll start up front with the quarterback. He's yeah. the guy that, uh, you know, everybody, they mm -hmm. hone in on. And, and Hunter Brown, one of the best years uh, a Tiger quarterback has ever had, coming off two very good years by Jake Russell. He led the nation in passing last mm -hmm. year, 377 yards, 37 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. Uh, this is a guy now in his redshirt senior season. Uh, he has the keys to the kingdom, so to yeah. speak, and, and he's the straw that serves the drink for the Tigers. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we've been blessed uh, to have some good quarterbacks in my time here, and, and, and certainly the last three years with Jake and then following up with Hunter has been special from that spot, and we're expecting Hunter to come in and, and continue to lead. I mean, he's uh, he's gotten settled into the position. He's uh, earned the right to go out there and do what he does, and he's very good at it. So we'll still throw that ball all over the field and, and try to make things happen with him uh, calling the snaps for us. He's done a good job. When we look at the, the running back position coach, uh, Chance Goodman and Wade Holtz, mm -hmm. two guys that have proved to be uh, very dependable, right. very steady guys in the backfield, and they really complement each other very well. Yeah, it's great having those two back, two seniors. Uh, you know, actually, Wade is a graduate. And uh, having those guys back there, you know you have sound football players back there, very intelligent, strong, athletic, uh, can make plays. They know the schemes, the blocking schemes, the checks, and so forth. So when you have that experience back there, that actually relieves a lot of pressure on that quarterback. So now you don't have to just rear back and throw the ball you know, 80 times a game. You can run that football in there with those two good backs and, and let them get those positive yards. And one thing with Wade as well, uh, he's proven to be a very good yes. uh, pass right. catcher out of the backfield. And that's another dimension of the offense, it seems, in this day and time of football, that's almost a must uh, in the backfield. Yeah, I mean, you have to do it. You know, Teams will load up the box. They will run some blitzes and so forth, especially with a quarterback like Hunter to get him off his spot. So if he can dip the ball to the uh, running back real quick like, or even down the field, you know, those guys have the ability, especially Wade, to catch the ball on the seam routes and so forth and on wheel routes, then that relieves a lot of pressure on him. And those are kind of like a tall sweep, you know, when you can get yards out of those. Senior at the quarterback position, a couple of seniors mm -hmm. leading the way at the running back position. Then a little more youth starts right. to show on the, right. on the offense. We'll start with the offensive line. Ralph Turner, maybe the only senior right. um, for the Tigers up front. Some other very good players. John Tuning, a local guy that, mm -hmm. that is now in his third season. He'll be a junior. Uh, but uh, that, that front, young but yeah. talented. Yeah, they're young. They're a young line. You know, we'll lose Ralph after this year. The rest of them return. But the, the beauty of it is they all have experience. You know, those guys have experience, those starters. 
and uh, we've won uh, a lot of games with a few of them up there, but we've also battled in a lot of games and had a very productive offense with others up there. And so we, we feel good about our old line. We feel like it's going to be you know, the best old line we've had, and, and uh, we have some good backups, some good young backups uh, that are ready to play that uh, can come in and relieve us a little bit. So we, we think that's a strong point for us, actually, you know, being able to run and pass block those old linemen because of their experience. And you know, as good as a head coach to sit back and know you're going to have most of those guys back next year and a few back the year after uh, so you don't drop off as much when you lose those stud quarterbacks and running backs. And then we look at the, the wide receiver position coach, uh, another position really young, mm -hmm. Zarek Willis, the household name that most people will recognize. He's back uh, for the Tigers, Keanu and Kendon Young, the Cousins, uh, Jordan Duff, Braden Russell, Jeremy Hines. Mm -hmm. You can see a lot of names uh, mixing in and out of there, but a deep position there at wide yeah, receiver. Yeah, a deep position. We, we probably don't have that Tyus Alcorn or Trevon Chapman out there, but we have a number of guys that'll go out there and stretch the field for us. And, and you have to defend all four receivers on the field. Um, once again, we're a little young out there. You know, Duff's an older guy, he's a junior, and um, Zarek's a senior. But other than that, you know, those guys, um, you know, are still pretty young, but they have experience. You know, Keanu Kendon's played, Braden's played, uh, Duff. You know, all those guys have played a number of reps. So we feel good about our receiver core. And, you know, we early on, Hunter's going to have to figure out, all right, when I get in trouble, who can I get it to? But that'll work itself out. And then we move to the defensive side of the ball. Coach, uh, defensive line seems to year in and year out, you just have this rotation that's, yeah. you know, sometimes six, eight, ten, mm -hmm. ten guys deep that you could throw out there and play. And uh, it doesn't appear to be any different this year. Yeah, it'd be the same. Once everybody's, uh, you know, re released eligibility-wise and healthy, we'll play eight guys on that defensive front will run four in and four out and we feel good about our defensive front now game one we'll be a little shorthanded because of issues but we feel good once everybody's in there that we'll be ready to go with a strong defensive line we've been uh, these guys in the spring and in the fall camp have shown that they're pretty stout on the run uh, and because of our quickness and strength we get after the pass uh, the quarterback pretty good so we feel good about our defensive box you start to talk about the guys at that second level, yeah. Coach, uh, linebackers, monsters uh, for you guys. Uh, you got a guy like Justin Manning who mm -hmm. seems to be all over the football field when he's out there, Elmer Barron and Khalil Baker and other guys. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, very good second unit for you guys, second uh, level. I right, so you know, Elmer will actually play up front this year. Uh, Khalil uh, Baker will move to a monster spot for us, and he's an experienced player. He's mostly been in the box, but he's going to be out of the box this year. Justin Manning, who was defensive player of the year as a freshman last year in the conference, will be returning at linebacker. And then DeAndre Hollis, who set last year, will be back in the mix. And DeAndre, you know, has played a number of reps for us over the last three years. So, you know, last year he uh, reassured and he's back in there. So game two, we'll see him back in. He won't be in our game one, but game two, you'll see him back in there. So though, I'm telling you, that box with DeAndre, Manning, Baker, and that defensive front, um, it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. Now, like I said, we're going to have to play a little bit without them for, for a game or so, but once they get in there, we feel real good about that box. We want to talk about the, the secondary, the coverage unit for you guys, mm -hmm. Coach, and uh, a lot of new names. Mm -hmm. uh, spent some time this offseason uh, trying to build up the depth at, at the secondary position. Right. Obviously, Marcus McCants has moved back to a safety position. Mm -hmm. Justin Ramos returns, but a lot of new names Tiger fans will hear this year. Yeah, uh, you know, Marcus and Justin will do the safety chore, and, and we feel good about that. They're experienced players back there. Uh, Mahari Sturgis, who was a freshman last year, he's a sophomore, and, and he didn't uh, – you know, get much playing time last year. He will start at our nickel position, uh, which is kind of a hybrid safety position. And, um, you know, then our corners are new. Uh, JT Davis and BJ Pelt, uh, both are our new corners. And then their backups will be Rontez Mitchell, who started last year, and Trey Webb, who two years ago was in our mix and he redshirted last year. So we have some experience back there. JT and, and uh, BJ are, are ju junior college transfers. and. Uh, we think when we have that entire defense together that we're going to be a very strong defense, much different than last year, which we felt like defensively last year we, is where we had our letdown. Um, like I said, game one, we're going to have to figure out how to get through it because we have some issues, so we'll have some guys out. But after that, I think that our defense will be really stout. 
Uh, Coach Thomas and the Tigers get their first look at that defense and live action comes Thursday night against U-Pike. Here at home, 7 p.m. kickoff, the Tiger Tailgate Show at 6.30. We hope you can make it to Finley Stadium. We'll step away, take a look at the 2017 schedule when we get back with Coach Thomas here on the Perry Thomas Show. Grandpa, famous for dropping a line. Lee's, famous for chicken. Fall into a deal this autumn at Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken with our spicy jumbo dippers combo for only $5.99. Take flavor and value to a whole new level with a cup of our spicy jumbo dippers, a side, a biscuit, and a regular drink, all for an amazing price. It's a deal that's easy to fall for. Make fall value season at Lee's with our spicy jumbo dippers combo for only $5.99. Only at Lee's, famous for chicken. My name is James C. Miller III, and I started to work at Taylor County Bank on July 1st, 1960. The bank was started because during the crash, the banks here failed, or at least one of them did. So there was a need for an additional bank in Taylor County. But the thing about our bank is this, that we had a, an old slogan back then, first in service, first in safety, first in convenience, and that's what we've always tried to do, and I, I think we still do. Campbellsville Baptist Church, a church where all ages grow in the love of God. From children and youth worship to sports ministry and mission outreach, Campbellsville Baptist Church shares the love of God both in and outside of the sanctuary. Join us for worship on Sunday mornings at 9 and small group Bible study at 1030. That's Campbellsville Baptist Church, the people of God sharing God's love because God's love changes the world. Welcome back to the Perry Thomas Show here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton joined by the head coach of Fighting Tiger Football, Perry Thomas, as we take a look at the 2017 schedule. Coach, uh, you waste no time getting out of the blocks yeah. here with the Thursday night. School uh, will not be in session. Students move in uh, Saturday, Friday, Saturday are move-in days. So uh, crowd could be a little sparse just with the students not being back on mm -hmm. campus. But you do get one of those night games that you enjoy. Yeah, we'll get a Thursday night game. And, you know, we've done it before. And, I mean, I guess the last three years we've opened on Thursdays, either at our place or at our opponents. And, and the crowd seems to get there. The community comes out and students start filtering back in. And, you know, obviously when you schedule the games, you're not sure of the school schedule. And it, it, it kind of changes it a little bit. Um, but, you know, I mean, we're, we're be ready to go. Uh, we'll have a nice crowd. There's no doubt the fans will come out. And, you know, Thursdays I think are special because the college D1 colleges start on Saturday. So a lot of people are wanting to see their favorite teams with the marquee games that will start here this week and next. Uh, so, you know, it kind of puts all the eyes on NAIA football with a uh, few games that you have. You know, those first four games of the season, Coach, are, are non-conference games. Those are important for you guys. You can kind of mm -hmm. work out some of the kinks. You welcome in Pikeville. You get a long uh, week to prepare right. before you go on the road down to Point in Georgia, a new member of the conference uh, this year with the expansion. Uh, then you get Warner at home mm -hmm. before the long trip down to Ave Maria in uh, Naples in yeah. uh, the middle of September. So four non-conference games, though, to start makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, I mean, it, it gives you a little grace because it, you don't have to go in and win. Obviously, you want to win every time, and you expect to win every time. But, you know, in 14, we were 3-4 and four at one point. And in 15, we lost our first two games, and we were still able to win the league and go to the playoffs. And because of the toughness of this league, uh, and the toughness of the Bluegrass Division with uh, Lindsey and, and Georgetown in there and Bethel and Cumberland, those teams are normally ranked teams. Yeah, I mean, we could still repeat that, but uh, certainly you want to win early. But it does give you a little grace to work out some kinks, uh, especially that first game, to get people back in the lineup that have got injuries from the summer or from camp or eligibility issues, you know, with school starting so late for us. You know, most schools are already in school, so Eligibility is not an issue with us. Our summer term actually ends, you know, uh, this weekend. So, you know, we'll have some guys waiting for that. Uh, so it gives you a little grace, you know, if you if you stub your toe a little bit. But we're not expecting that. Obviously, you're going in expecting to win. And you know, the good thing about it, if you beat a U Pike, 
who uh, won the East last year, that's going to move you up in the ratings. You beat a Warner, who only had two losses last year, that's going to move you up in the rating. Point went to the playoffs two years ago, moves you up the ratings. So it's important to get started early and get started well because the higher you get in those, the quicker you get in those ratings, then the higher you can go, which was seed for playoff, uh, hosting playoff spots. So, you know, we won the league in 14 and 15, but because we didn't start in the pitcher, uh, we wasn't able to host. So you need to get in that top eight to, to do that. And we, not to be a dead horse, we've talked about that one before. Mm -hmm. It's those preseason rankings are always kind of based on the previous year. Yeah. And sometimes those those things don't always work out. Yeah, like I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I wish they wouldn't rank. I mean, they, they'll have a preseason ranking and then they won't come back for three weeks and, and rate again, rank again. And I wish they just didn't have the preseason because as a Raider, I know you're looking at those preseason rankings to justify where people are moving in the in the uh, the original ranking that comes out three weeks later, three or four weeks later. So I wish they wouldn't even have a rating. I do the spring thing and then start fresh uh, after three games and, and and go from there because I think it just gives you a better shot. A couple of Appalachian teams and, and Sun Conference teams to start the schedule for the Tigers. Then you get into the conference play six straight conference games mm -hmm. of the Bluegrass Division to close things out. Coach, you'll have matchups with Bethel, Kentucky Christian, mm -hmm. Cincinnati Christian, Georgetown, Cumberland, Lindsey Wilson. Uh, you know, that's a tough one, as you said. That's going to yeah. be a tough go in right. the Bluegrass Division, but, uh, you know, a task that you've proven up to in the past. Yeah, it's going to be a tough battle, but, you know, I think that's the way this league is now with the 21 or 22 or whatever teams in it. I think pretty much every week is going to be a battle. And, uh, you know, the, the great thing about it is the fans are always going to see exciting football. The great thing about it is that if you're winning, you're going to get high ratings. Uh, the tough part about it is because you're always playing someone good, you know, we're going to be knocking each other off a little bit. So you, you, have, to, you have to win. You can't just go out and play a good team close. Uh, you got to win because, you know, somebody's got to play Reinhardt. Someone has to play Faulkner. Someone has to play Southeast. You know, these teams that have been traditionally good. Someone has to play us, Lindsey, Georgetown, so forth. So we're going to be knocking each other off out of the league. So that, that makes it challenging. So, uh, but, you know, you, that home schedule in, in league play is going to be great. Obviously, KCU comes. Lindsey, I mean, uh, Georgetown's here at home for homecoming. Uh, we have Cumberland University here at home, and those are all exciting games. And so we're excited about our schedule. We're excited about the home schedule also. Before we wrap up this segment, Coach, we do want to mention some coaching staff mm -hmm. changes. Hunter Cantwell took a, a coaching job yeah. uh, in the northern part of the state there in the state of Kentucky uh, at the high school level. Uh, so you reshuffle some things. Uh, Eugene Crosby comes in. He'll coach mm -hmm. the offensive line for you. And then Vincent Brown comes in to take care of the linebackers uh, right. for the Tigers this season. Just uh, some thoughts on those two guys. Well, it, it, you know, it, it's, we've had a lot of changes actually within the staff. And to be honest with you, I was asking about what we've done in all season. You know, the difficulty for me has been getting this staff complete. Uh, it's been a challenging year. We, I mean, trying to get coaches. We, we hired a linebacker coach, and then he wound up leaving for a D1 job. So we had to get another linebacker coach. And we probably got, you know, turned down a few times looking for O-line coaches and, and so forth. And we finally found Coach Crosby. And uh, we're, we're very blessed to get these guys. Coach Crosby has a lot of experience, and it, it relieves Coach uh, Garris to kind of focus on the total – a total offense. Uh, he doesn't have to have a position. And so we, we think Coach Crosby will come in and get after it and do a great job there. And Coach Brown does the same thing for me at linebacker. It gives me a chance to be the head coach and the defensive coordinator. And he's done a great job with those guys. Getting them so late has hurt our numbers a little bit recruiting wise. Uh, but we'll pick that back up, you know, as we get into mid season, so, I mean, mid uh, mid year and pick up some mid year guys. Well, we look forward to hearing from Coach Crosby and Coach Brown as the season moves along for the Tigers. We'll step away, come back, and get Coach Thomas's thoughts on this opening night matchup with University of Pikeville here on the Perry Thomas Show. A champion doesn't get days off. It takes determination and drive to realize goals. From long nights, to early mornings, from the courts, to the classrooms, to online. At Campbellsville University, this is why we play. This is how we learn. This is where champions are made. 
Find your calling for a life change at campbellsville.edu. Whether you're two or 102, the Tigerville Grill has something for you. Take advantage of the Build Your Own Burger menu. In the mood for something small? Choose one of the many delicious slider options. Call ahead and use our fast and easy drive through Oh, that cool freestyle fountain drink machine? We've still got it. The Tigerville Grill, located at 314 North Columbia Avenue and open to the public 11 to 8 daily. Thanks for staying with us on the Perry Thomas Show here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton and Coach Perry Thomas here as we break down this opening night matchup. Thursday night, the Tigers will kick off. Uh, tomorrow night, the Tigers will kick off against the University of Pikeville at Finley Stadium, 7 p.m. Coach, and you guys get, get ready here. You've been in camp for a few weeks. Now uh, you've been breaking down the film, looking at Pikeville, doing all this, having an opponent uh, to, to match up with. Uh, it's an exciting time, but uh, what do we know about this Pikeville box? Well, I mean, it's, it's, that game opener is always tough because it's, uh, it's not like high school football. You exchange uh, scrimmage films and so forth. You know, we, we haven't seen Pikeville since they played Georgetown last fall, and they haven't seen us since we played Cincinnati Christian. So you don't know the changes that have gone on. Uh, you can look at the roster and see what the uh, personnel look like, but you don't know the changes uh, that have gone on in the systems and so forth. So it, that's the challenge of it. And that's why I think when you go into that game one and even game two somewhat, you got to focus a great deal on correcting yourselves and then just go play football and hope that you're sound and make adjustments as the game goes on. We know they're a very experienced team. They return a, a quarterback that started for four years when he's been healthy, and he's uh, lights out at throwing the ball and running the football. He's an active quarterback. Uh, you have to check him every time. They always got a good running back. Two years ago, they had a first-team All-American. Last year, they had a kid that got back there and was very good also, and huge up front on the offensive line. Uh, and then they have some very fast and tall receivers, you know, 6'2", 6'6", guys. Uh, defensively, they were very active last year, stunted a lot, uh, moved around a lot, and I thought their front was pretty sound, the squeezing gaps and so forth. So they're a very experienced football team. Um, it's, a, it's a challenging opener for you uh, because they're, they were disappointed that they didn't get to go to the playoffs last year but they know they return everybody. So, you know, they're feeling good. Now we return most of our guys also. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad. They beat us pretty good last year, but I think that, you know, if we got a full lineup in there, then we'll have a competitive game. You know, that game last year was a, kind of a quirky game. You had a power outage and uh, different things. It kind of threw off maybe some rhythm and, and momentum and hopefully nothing. Something about these home, these openers, yeah. Coach, uh, we just have some wild <laughs> times, Lindsay and Pikeville, yeah. but hopefully everything goes off with, without a hitch this week. Uh, you talked about the quarterback, Sonny Warren. Uh, some of the maybe similarities offensively, uh, kind of a spread, uh, mm -hmm. one back at times, they're, they're going to do a lot of stuff. Maybe some similarities offensively between the yeah. two? Yeah, I mean, a, a little. Most of the time, though, they're going to do zone read stuff and RPO what we call RPO run pass option type of stuff where they're going to you know on one play he can give it to the back on a zone he could keep it on the run off the zone or he can throw the ball you know off screens or downfield off of it so that that's a little challenging because people have to be very disciplined and you can't just attack the run or the pass uh, you have to really be keyed in on what you're doing. You know, the big deal last year defensively, I thought we defensed them well most of the game but then in the second half they big played us a few times and you know, a couple of big runs and a couple of deep passes. Um, so we have to, we have to, you know, avoid the big plays so we can give our offense a chance to score. And then obviously ball security has to be big on offense. One thing I do want to mention before we let you go, Coach, uh, special teams, Matt Atwood will now be yes. the special teams coordinator. Yes. We do want to mention Bradley Bates, uh, All-American Honors mm -hmm. last year, and Noah Bixler will handle the, the punting duties for you. Bradley Bates returns uh, as the kicker, uh, two very solid young men there. Yeah, we feel roles. good about our kick, our kickers and, and our long snappers, you know, with Austin Hash in there and Braden Russell will back him up. So uh, we feel good about that. You know, you're not going to really know your coverage on, on kicks and, and your protection until you get in the game because it's hard to mimic in practice because you're trying to keep kids safe. So, you know, all that stuff gets worked out in game one and two, you know, games one and two, or if you watch the high school games this past weekend or 
are a little ugly and a little pretty. And there's going to be some good things and there's going to be some ugly things. And you just, as a coach, you make the adjustments as you go and as players and, and, and continue to drive and get better, uh, recognizing that you're playing for those November and December games. And that's what we're going to focus on. Well, Coach, best of luck Thursday night. Thank you. The Tigers uh, kick it off tomorrow night against the University of Pikeville, 7 p.m. kickoff. Jim Freeman and I will have the call for you, the Tiger Tailgate Show at 6.30. Thanks for joining us this week on the Perry Thomas Show.